It's the end of an era in West Africa as France moves to scrap the currency used by its former colonies. CFA franc will now become the eco. But is this genuine change or just a rebrand? And is France really breaking with its colonial past on the African continent? This is Inside Story. Hello everyone, I'm Kamal Santa Maria. Eight West African countries will soon be using a new currency. And it may well be that you didn't even know they had an old one. But for 75 years, the CFA, or the CFA as it would be said in French, has been used as money from Senegal to Niger and most places in between. But now the French government's officially approved the end of the CFA franc. It means France will cease to co-manage the West African currency. The Bank of France will no longer hold half of the currency's reserves. And a replacement currency, the ECO, will be introduced while keeping its exchange rate fixed to the euro. France negotiated with its former colonies for three years before reaching a deal last year. One of the problems with the CFA was that it has long been seen as a sign of French interference in its former African colonies, well after they became independent. The currency is used by Benin, Burkina Faso, Guinea-Bissau, Ivory Coast, Mali, Niger, Senegal and Togo. All of those, except Guinea-Bissau, are former French colonies. Seven other members of ECOWAS, the Economic Community of West African States, have their own currencies, but there is a push for them to adopt the new ECO as well. Under the New Deal, France will sever institutional ties with the West African State Central Bank and its monetary union. Instead, it will play a backup role by guaranteeing to provide the central bank with euros if it faces a currency crunch. So let's introduce you then to today's panel, starting in Abuja, Nigeria, with Ken Ife. He is a macro economic policy analyst and also a consultant to the ECOWAS Commission. In Yaoundé, Cameroon, Marie-Roger Biloa, a West Africa analyst and chief executive director of the Africa International Media Group. And in Portsmouth in the UK is Tony Chafer. He's a professor of African and French studies at the University of Portsmouth. Welcome to all three of you. Thank you for joining us. I, I, I want us to look forward uh, in this discussion, but I think we do need a little bit of history because, as I pointed out, a lot of people may not even know about um, the CFA. I was interested uh, to see, after it was created in 1945, and I'll tell the viewers this as well, that the French uh, Minister of Finance at the time said this, in a show of her generosity and selflessness, metropolitan France wishing not to impose on her faraway daughters the consequences of her own poverty, is setting different exchange rates for their currency. Ken, if I let me start with you, that's very benevolent sounding, isn't it? It's after the war, we're doing everything we can for our faraway daughters, as France said back then. In reality, how did it turn out? I mean, 75 years this has been in place, and a lot of people actually look at it as a lingering sign of colonialism. Well, the jury is out on, on the efficacy of, of that arrangement over the last 40, uh, 75 years. But one thing I would have to say is that is a triumph uh, for, for, a, for, for a good relationship between France and, and West Africa. And it is to be celebrated that, that our Francophone brothers have gained their monetary policy independence. But that is not by any means an end to the relationship uh, between uh, France and, and, and West African countries. Far from it, because still they offer, they, they have two offers on the table. Can we peg the eco to euro. Mm. Two, can France guarantee this currency? So they're all on the table. But I think more, the answers will be found as we continue to negotiate with the rest of the African, uh, West Africa, uh, one of the countries. Well, you would think, That's Ken, the that France... More more I, I would think, Ken, and correct me if I'm wrong, that why, why, why would France guarantee the currency? Because this is supposed to be about it cutting its ties more, isn't it? And, and giving more independence, giving the independence back. I know. I said it's an offer. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's an offer on the table. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I'm not sure members, the, the overall members of the whole ECO, as 15 countries, will be disposed to accept those offers. But, but at least it shows some goodwill mm. that they still they still regard themselves, and we are all strategic partners in this game. 
Let's go to marie Roger Biloa in Yaoundé. Welcome to you. What's your take on, uh, well, as I said to, to Ken there, the success or otherwise of the last 75 years of the CFA? Well, um, the CFA has always been a French currency, not an African one. Uh, it started with choosing the name, choosing all the major aspects, like uh, setting a fixed uh, um, conversibility, uh, deciding that all, over 50% of the foreign exchange coming from export will be lodged in the French trunks, and also deciding to divide the initial CFA France zone. You know, initially, there were 15 countries, West and Central Africa, and France's, France decided unitarily to uh, deprive the African of the single most interesting aspect, which was having a common currency for 15 countries. Mm. So France has always made all decisions, all strategic decisions about uh, that currency. So tr they were denying, they were saying, no, uh, we have uh, uh, African uh, communities, we have uh, meetings with Africans, and mm. they have titles, this and that. But it has always been a French curse. Well, can I go so back now, to one of the points? Sorry, um, Marie-Roger, but to go back to one of the points you made about the fact that the countries had to have 50% of their reserves with the Bank of France. And if I'm correct, uh, the Bank of France would actually charge them more interest if they wanted to use over a certain amount. I mean, it was, the, it was, it was very, very post-colonial, wasn't it? Yes, that was one of the most controversial points. And uh, when we say 50%, it has been reduced uh, recently, because before that it was 75%, and even when they say 50%, they say, but uh, except from the money uh, with uh, uh, were linked with the exchanges with the World Bank, and except this and that, but it's always over 50%. And they also say, well, that money was freely available to African countries, which was not true in the facts. You know, it was not true. They, it was a way to control. The, the export and, 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 let's say, international trade of uh, African countries linked to the CFA. So that was one of the most points. And now they say you, you, are, you are allowed to, to keep part of that money, that's the foreign exchange, in other places, in other banks, you have to decide what. So people will see uh, what will come next. I think now we see that... Uh, Something has changed because even if it's superficially, uh, what has changed is was breaking a taboo mm. that the franc CFA is a colonial currency, it has to change. So they will change the name. But by doing that, France has managed to hijack the name uh, created and reserved, sort of, by uh, the, the ECOWAS, ECOWAS as a whole, yeah. the countries <laughs> of ECOWAS. And, uh, and doing so, they now split again the ECOWAS. They are splitting all the, the, the initial CFA zone. Now they are splitting ECOWAS and keeping the former uh, CFA from countries in a group which is supposed to uh, have ECOWAS as, right. as a currency. So then it leads and me, it leads me then, uh, sorry, Marie Roger, I want to bring Tony into the conversation as well. It leads me to possibly, actually, it was the original question I asked at the very start of this program is this real change or is it just, as Marie Roger was outlining there, maybe just a, a, a rebrand, really? Uh, well, in my view, it's largely a rebrand. But can I just correct something that you said in your introduction that this marked the end of the CFA Frank zone? Uh, the CFA Frank Zone is actually 14 countries, eight in West Africa mm -hmm. and six in Central Africa. And the proposal only covers the eight countries in West Africa. It doesn't cover the uh, Central Africa. No, quite CFA right. And, and that was something I was going to bring up a little bit later about whether this could actually spread to the, uh, the, the Central African countries. For now, though, let's focus on the, on the, on the West African ones. And, and, yeah, go back to your point about you saying that you think this is just a rebrand. Well, the CFA Frank Zone, as you rightly said, has its origins in the colonial period, 1945. Um, it was maintained when the countries gained independence in 1960. It was maintained and it was deliberately maintained because it was a, a vehicle for French influence uh, in uh, West Africa and particularly in relation to the uh, Francophone 
uh, African countries. The Frank Zone has always been first and foremost a political entity, not an economic en entity. Yeah. It's a vehicle for uh, continuing French influence uh, in that part of the world. Um, now, uh, as one of your previous speakers said, um, France has called the shots traditionally in the CFA franc zone. In 1994, the currency was devalued by 50 percent. Mm. And that was a decision taken by France without consultation with any of the African partners. And it happened overnight. It was a 50 percent uh, devaluation. And ever since then, many, uh, many Africans in Francophone Africa have um, considered this to be a continuing uh, example of French uh, neo-colonialism. And, and I think what, we, what I see the um, reform that's been announced recently as is a, is a rebranding of, which enables France to maintain uh, its influence in that part of the world because it was increasingly being attacked by um, uh, African uh, Africans, particularly young people, who, who saw it as a hangover from the colonial period, a, a denial of sovereignty, um, and I mean it, it even it even became an issue in Europe, um, in the EU, in January 2019, when the Deputy Prime Minister of Italy, Luigi Di Maio, um, called for uh, sanctions on France um, because of its policies in Africa, and he mm. particularly had in mind. Um, uh, the, the CFA, uh, the CFA Frank Zone. So there's a sense in which France's role in the CFA Frank Zone was becoming an embarrassment to France, and this is a this is a way of, um, while making some relatively technical changes, mm. um, uh, maintaining as much as possible of um, uh, the the current system. And and, and remember right. that the new. Uh, currency rebranded the echo or the old currency rather the cfa franc rebranded the echo mm. will still be tied to the euro at a fixed rate of exchange and guaranteed by the bank of france right then so then this will lead me and and i'll, I'll start maybe with ken on this one to to what's going to change we have to look at this and hope that in 2020 after 75 years there will be a positive change and that west african states will have more control and a say over their money and and what gets uh, where it gets invested do you think that is actually going to happen, Ken? Right. The, the thing is, is more than rebranding, because there is complete control now of the monetary policy by the UMR countries, that the French-speaking countries. Hmm. It's, it's much more, it's more cosmetic than that. Now, second one is that it is not, it's more than hijack of the name ECO. The, the history is that the arrangement has been for the non-UMR countries, which are the WAMZ, West Africa Monetary Zone countries, and these countries are Liberia, Gambia, Ghana, mm. Nigeria, Guinea, Conakry, and Sierra Leone. We were all going to converge our currencies to ECO, mm. but we continue to sleep on the deadline. We sleep from 2003 to 2005 to 2010 to 2014, and then finally they said it's got to happen in 2020. So why is on one track we are trying to get all these currencies to collapse into eco, and then it is after that collapse in the eco that within 2020 we will now negotiate with the CFA uh, to converge mm. into the eco. So what has happened is that I can't blame the francophone countries. They've waited for too long. So for them to wait again, there's no point in them waiting. So whatever happened is fait accompli. They have to... They had a date with destiny on 2020, so mm -hmm. they have realized that in a great part. But the real change will come when we now collapse everything into a single ECOWAS country uh, 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 currency. And that will take quite some measures, because the 10 yeah. convergence criteria, which even have reduced to four core, key, uh, core criteria, we're so far away from meeting those. Uh, and I'm not sure if you're, you're familiar with those. One of them is that we have to have a single digit inflation. Only Nigeria is in 12.4, mm. 12.46%. is only Togo that has met all the criteria. And then you have to meet this criteria for three consecutive years. The second criteria, which is fiscal deficit, must be less than 4%, where Nigeria met that substantially because by law, we can't exceed 3%. 
and we are around about 2.5 percent. But Ghana is about 7 percent. Then you come to other other ones like um, that. You, the central bank of each country must, in their fiscal financing, should not be more than 10 percent of of government revenue. That we are all at different stages mm. there. And the fourth core one is that your foreign reserve must must allow for not less than three months of your export. We're okay for Nigeria. Our foreign reserve is over thirty billion dollars, so we're okay nine months. That can go for nine months. But you can't say that for all other for countries. all the countries. So the way you're and describing also it for other ones the, that we had so much divergence. The way you're describing it, Ken, and maybe I'll put this to Marie Roger in Yaoundé. The way Ken is describing it is that there is, and it's true, there's a lot of work if you want to bring the existing countries and potentially more countries into this new currency. Um, there's a lot of work to do, and you're dealing with countries at all sorts of different levels. Uh, it, very simply, it would remind me of the euro in Europe and how each country has to come to a certain level to, to, to join it, and it's not necessarily that easy. But you see, to take the to remain uh, with the example of the euro, mm. you see it was more a political decision to, to get on board all the countries they wanted to have. And uh, just to say we, we need to move forward. Uh, it is impossible at some time, when, when, when you really want to start, uh, to wait until everything is, is uh, matches together. But um, I think one of the, the problems we have here is the hostility um, France is showing towards Nigeria. Because what uh, is at stake here? Why did they rush to announce something everybody has been expecting, for sure, but not in that way? Um, and, and, and to make sure that you have one group, which, is the, which are the, the, the francophone countries mm. in one side, and the others on the other side. In the others, you know, when the President Macron, alongside with uh, President uh, Ouattara, announced uh, the, uh, the end of, of, of the France EFA back in December, they called on uh, other countries uh, for outside of the uh, France EFA zone to join in, but clearly not called, not invited Nigeria. And whenever you listen to uh, uh, French officials, um, they they are afraid of Nigeria being the the natural pole to ag aggregate a new currency. Right. And uh, the economic giant Nigeria is a sort of a rival of French influence uh, on that part of Africa. And I think. This is something you have to consider. There is a long history of, um, I would say, uh, French, uh, French issue with Nigeria uh, dating back uh, to the uh, Biafra war. Mm. And uh, the Nigeria is a very important partner, business partner, but they are still looking at it with uh, sort of, uh, some kind of, um, uh, I would say, uh, reluctance or, you know, so... Well, let's get Tony's thoughts on that, then. I'd like him to pick up on what you've, you've outlined, Marie-Roger. Tony, your take on that idea that France, in trying to extricate itself here, is actually through, um, as Marie-Roger described there, an a, a, a economic conflict with, with Nigeria, not, in fact, extricating itself and, in fact, complicating things even further. Yes, I think that's uh, I, I think that's absolutely right. And Marie-Roger is absolutely right to say that there is this long-standing... Um, mutual suspicion about each other's motives between Nigeria and France that goes right back to um, the, the Biafra War, 1967-70, when, um, uh, when France supported the, the Biafran uh, separatists. Um, and, and France has always been, um, shall we say, in two minds about how far it wants to engage with Echo was because there is always the, if you like, the elephant in the room of Nigeria, which is, you know, the big powerhouse. It's the regional hegemon. Um, and therefore, uh, potentially, um, if not actually, a threat to uh, continuing French influence. I'd also like to come back to uh, one thing that was said earlier on about um, uh, uh, about the rebranding. Mm. Uh, the reason I... The reason I see it as a, essentially a, a, a rebranding is because, um, okay, the, um, 
the France won't be on the managing board of the uh, right. currency any longer. But you can't forget the fact that France is a very influential player with the Francophone African countries. It remains very involved with the Francophone African countries. It's a leading uh, figure alongside the G5 Sahel countries, which are the five five Francophone African countries across the across the Sahel. So France France will still have influence. All right, it won't be formally on the board, but it will still have influence. And so that really comes back to what I said at the beginning that you know the the Frank zone as it is is a political entity. Mm. That political entity doesn't fundamentally change by renaming the CFA Frank the Echo. Mm. OK, then, we're starting to run down the clock, uh, folks, but I just want to get a couple of final questions in. Ken, a quick word from you again um, about opportunity. Tell me about the opportunities you see here, because a lot of what we focused on is all the, the hurdles that could be there, but what if this is done right, what opportunities, positive opportunities, could come out of it for the region? There's no doubt that if we can get it right, it will open up the whole re sub-regional economy, with, with, without question. But the thing is that... There are substantial considerations that have to be given to who... Nigeria is the, is the biggest economy in Africa. There's no doubt about that. And it's 70% of ECOWAS. And, uh, and you can't challenge historical relationships between Afri uh, France and other countries. Many countries have historical relationships. But the thing is, Nigeria has the opportunity to actually become the guarantor of the of the eco currency rather than France. And I don't think they will accept to anybody would accept France to guarantee this currency. Because they have the largest reserves and by far the biggest economy. And it's not about political domination. We're talking about political integration. We've we've now moving from ECOWAS to continental free trade area. We're moving towards the continent. So mm. this whole thing about competitive competition uh, or surgery, it's not it's not there. It's only it exists in people's minds. But right. that's not the reality. Could, could and this let work, me tell then? you again that could... this has also flagged up two major issues. And these two issues are social, socioeconomic convergence criteria and political convergence criteria. Uh, Nigeria is saying, OK, look, let's, for the whole thing to work together, mm. let's stop this cross-border terrorism because we are all in one region. Yeah. And then also let's fight against smuggling across the border and dumping of could... goods across the border so that the whole thing, we, let's take it all at once. So Marie Roger, about economic so, sorry, Ken, I'm going to interrupt. So I'm running out of time. Marie Roger, a quick thought. Could that work, what Ken said, the idea of Nigeria being a guarantor and then it, it bringing more community to the whole idea? I, absolutely. I can't agree more. I think now the ball in, in, in the camp of, of uh, Nigeria, uh, uh, which has been supported very much when France launched the uh, ECO was the, the new ECO uh, back in December, mm. many... Uh, uh, countries rallied about around Nigeria to say, no, that's not the plan we had. So I think uh, going to in, uh, regional integration, we have a tool now. African countries are not uh, bound to, to do what France wants to do. Yeah. We know their plans. They are allowed to have plans. But African countries also have their own agenda. And now, now that there is an opening, for sure there's an opening, to, to have to build a common currency, an African currency, to, to take back the reins of uh, the economy and, and the monetary, the monetary uh, uh, policy. I think now uh, the civil society, top economies, have been working uh, relentlessly to, uh, to think the new uh, currency. What is the future? What, is the, what are the steps ahead? Yeah. Because it's not so easy to change a long-running system. So I think now the possibility is there. Uh, and and uh, and I think France must not be the big player it wants of to course. be if Africans uh, unite and 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 yeah. just follow their agenda. Yeah, after 75 years, definitely. You'd think time for some change. Ken Ife, Marie Roger Biloa, and Tony Chafer, thank you so much for being a part of today's Inside Story. And, of course, thank you for watching uh, wherever you are around the world. Uh, this program and, indeed, all of our previous editions are available online in the shows section at aljazeera.com. We're also at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. Uh, on Twitter, it is just at AJ Inside Story and at Kamal AJE if you want to get in touch with me directly. I'm Kamal Santa Maria from the whole Inside Story team. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again soon.